So I want to talk about shorting again today. Now, I do have a couple of other videos out there that you can check out by following these links here. The first one talks about shorting in general. The second one talks about a short squeeze. Now, one thing you might want to know or get a sense of is how much people are shorting a stock out there. So there, are, unfortunately, there are quite a few ways of measuring it. There's quite a few names for those measures, and they use those names interchangeably. So it's a little bit confusing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the methods, give the names that I think are most appropriate, the important thing is that you understand the different measures, what they're measuring, and how you might use those measures in your stock analysis. Now, one thing you're going to hear out there is short interest. Now, typically, when people say short interest, they're talking about the number of shares of a particular company that are shorted. Here's a chart over time showing that shorted shares have slowly declined for this particular stock. That is talking about just the shares. If we go and look out there right now, we can see that these are the top 10 companies shorted if we use the number of shares out there, okay? Now, another thing you might do is, well, all of these companies aren't priced the same. So let's, instead of looking at just the number of shares, let's look at the value of those shares. So we can multiply these by the price. If we do that, then we get a, a different list in terms of the top 10 companies shorted by the dollar amount shorted for those stocks. If we do that, here's the top 10 list. And we can see that there are three names in common between these two different methods, whether we're using the number of shares or the value of those shares. I'm going to differentiate short interest between short interest shares and short interest dollars. People will say short interest out there just without clarifying which one they're talking about. Now, of course, when we looked at those two things, those numbers were relative to nothing, right? So you might say, well, let's compare that to either the total number of shares out there, or if we're using shares, or the market cap value of that company if we're looking at the dollar value. Now, something to keep in mind is if you're using the full market cap, some of those shares are restricted. And it's fine to use those, but keep that in mind. So another thing we could do is instead of looking at that full basket is look at the float. So we're gonna ignore the restricted shares, those held by insiders, et cetera, and look at those shares that are actually available out there for people to short. And we'll compare you know, either the number of shares to the floated shares or the value to the value of the float. Now, keep in mind that as that float shrinks, volatility is going to go up. Now, volatility can be your friend or it can be your enemy when it comes to shorting because, because both possibilities going, going up and going down kind of increase. So keep that in mind too. Now, if we do this here, we're going to look at you know, the number of shares compared to the float. Uh, this is the original example. If we do that now compared to the float, here is now the top 10 list by this short float percent. Here, uh, the numbers have again changed. These numbers are kind of common to the previous chart where we were looking at just the number of shares. Now, another thing you could say is, well, we have the float, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's traded, right? We can't control how investors in that float trade. So another thing we could do is instead of looking at the float, we can look at what's actually traded. So compare these numbers to average daily volumes. Now, if we do that, again, we can do that either based on shares or value is kind of going to be the same percent we get a short interest ratio. Now here is what we get if we look at that. Uh, there's a new top 10 list in terms of the most shorted shares out there. If we do this, we can see very, depending on which chart we're looking at, there are kind of four names in common uh, amongst this, these different methodologies. So here's yet another measure of how you can do that. Now, ultimately what we're concerned about is we have all these shorters out there at some point, they're going to want to close out that position. In order to close out that position, they actually have to go to the market and buy that stock back so they can return it to the person they borrowed it from. Now, so if all of these people wanted to do it all at once, like how many days would it actually take to cover their positions, close out their position? And they, these measures give you some sense of that. I think using average daily volume is probably more realistic than using the float and even more so more realistic than using the actual market cap. So keep that in mind. As I've said before, I'm going to say it again, betting on a stock going down by shorting it is a very risky proposition. You have unlimited loss potential. Options are a safer option to do so because you don't have that loss. The maximum you can lose is that premium. I have a lot of videos on options. If you want to check those out, follow these links right here. So with this, all I can say is good luck with however you decide to do it. Have fun. Happy trading. Thanks so much. I'm Brian Kozlowski.